Hey guys, I am working on my fire bucket. Isn't this exciting? So as you can see, this was a bird seed container. So I was trying to think of something different to do while drilling the holes, cause that's the next step. For airflow, for a fire to work, it needs a little bit of oxygen. So I just cut out these templates. Here's a star. I was thinking about tracing this and maybe trying to drill the holes in a star pattern. I don't really know how well that's going to work or if at all, but it needs to get holes in it one way or another. So if it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good. It's not a big deal. I think I also have to charge my drill because that is never seems to be charged. And then maybe like a spiral on the bottom. We'll see how that goes. I feel like <laughs> I have really big dreams that are not going to be fulfilled on this day, but I'm going to get out my drill and get out my drill bit that I picked up in Salt Spring. And yeah, who's excited for this to work? I'm excited to have a fire. Oh yeah. After doing the first two holes, I decided I could not do this by eye. I really needed to consider it before I even started putting holes in it because you can't really go back once you, once you made a decision. So I decided to really evenly disperse some fingerprints with paint all over the star of places I wanted to put the holes. I waited for these to dry and then drilled holes in each of the dots. I think this would have been a bit of a cleaner job with all with drilling some of the holes if I was working on a hard surface I was kind of just in my van but maybe if I was doing it outside on some stone I would have got some cleaner drill holes because some were worse than others but uh yeah it was it was pretty fun honestly it was really fun to do this project Okay, so this is how it went. It's still pretty, pretty messy with paint everywhere, but I'm sure after a few fires, all of that, all of that loose stuff will just come right off. So yeah, I just used fingerprints and then drilled holes there. And hopefully you can kind of tell that they're stars. <laughs> it's really messy for sure. It's kind of easier to see from the inside. But I think it'll be even easier to see at night during a fire. They're not perfect, that's for sure. But we'll see if I have to add more holes than this, because that's something Flossie did warn me about. They had to go back and add more airflow. Hopefully this will do. I'll test it out a few times, but definitely can add a few more over here and we'll see. That was such a fun project. I feel very accomplished and I'm psyched to use my new fire bin. Yay. Today we are going to hike Willow Bray Trail and reach Half Moon Bay. Let's get to it. This is this looks very cute so far. I'm very excited to do my first real trail of ukulele kind of second real trail got a nice accommodations those waves sound intense this will be the first time of ever reaching the shore i'm so captivated already. <laughs> These stairs are really intense too.
Wow, it looks like the shore rises a lot here. <laughs> well, let's go play in the sand. I didn't really bring my hiking shoes, which I regretted kind of right away, even though it was a really simple path. It's always good to have the option to explore more. I mean, maybe we'll do it again. Holy wow. There's this big wall of forest, a nice little corner open into this beautiful crescent bay. All these little bird footprints. They're so cute. Wow. It's like I'm walking on glass. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's coming way farther than I thought it would. Okay, back it up, back it up, back it up. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my God, who hurts who, who hurts who? Oh, Mike and Denise, that's nice. There's another heart over here. Who hearts who? Who hearts who? Oh, it's Mike and Denise still. Mike really likes Denise. Okay, my mistake. This is Florencia Beach. Uh, if I want to go to Half Moon Bay, I'll be turning left up the stairs a little bit. So I think I'll check that out too. Might as well. But I actually want to come back with better shoes so I can like maybe hike this entire thing. I don't know. Oh, the sand is so soft. So smooth and silky, I love it. Hello, Smiley. On our way to Half Moon Bay. It looks like the white part of the tides is like creating a moon every single time. Everything is just like contoured into a moon shape here. It's so pretty. It's so heavy too. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, the rainbow color in that is just too nice. up if you touch them. They're so 
right below. I'm in a crevice of rock that gets quite the current. And it's also really beautiful. All those purple and blue oysters everywhere with the speckles of barnacles and then those pink rocks adjacent to the beautiful seawater. So many nice colors here. This place could use a lot of exploring. Rocks on rocks on rocks. It's pretty freaking awesome. Very pretty seaweed. Or is it a toy boat? Let's see. Does she float? I mean, there's a few holes in her, but a little bit. Maybe a little, little fly could catch her eye. Just walking down a quarter of rocks. Look how orange you look. Cool though. <laughs> the Amber Beach. Just seeing it for the first time is such a big deal and such a big difference from seeing it zero times. <laughs> oh wow. The moss and old man's beard hanging from everything. I think I found one of the ancient cedars. Wow. 
wow, the colors and the twists. This is so beautiful and fantasy. This is actually very similar of how I always used to draw trees growing up. Like just lines spiraling up it. It's so funny. <laughs> once again, I can hear sea lions. <laughs> so once again, I'm gonna go on the hunt for them. Let's see if we can find them this time. Parked here, did this loop yesterday. And today I did this and I walked around the bog a little bit and then I suddenly ended up back here. Mm -hmm. And I went up this way. This peninsula on the drive, Victoria here. Um, oh, actually, is this Little Beach? Oh, Little Beach. I went here first, and I went up here, down here. Went to Big Beach, did a little path here, down here, <laughs> all the way, and I did the half of the ancient cedar. I would love to go back and just see that last guy or what else is there, but I would also love to do the rocky bluffs. Yeah, I think we're gonna go cut through the middle of town on the way back. And I wanna check out this area too, cause I might par park there soon. experience. <laughs> Pretty cool though. I'm gonna see if I can get one little shot. Getting a little bit closer off this pier. Oh my goodness, how many are there? They just travel in such groups. It's so interesting.
I just had another police interaction. <laughs> this is funny because it's like the first time I've been in a small town where it was a police interaction. So this time it was actually the same officer as yesterday. <laughs> so it's like I'm making a friend. I get a visitor every morning. Um, <laughs> his name's Nelson. <laughs> uh, okay. So basically, yeah, he knocked on my window and was a little bit more annoyed today. He was like very all business while I was just innocent and uh, kind of dumb acting. I feel like very, very naive kind of. He started off very aggressive, starting with like, uh, yeah, so it's illegal, it's a bylaw to not uh, live in your vehicle starting to just like question me a little bit because he did tell me this yesterday that you can't sleep in your vehicle in Ukulit but I moved out of town like I've been doing um past the tourist center like past everything past the junction is what he said and so like that's fine it's like 15 minutes out of town but he like confronted me with like I don't believe you like I don't believe you didn't sleep here I was like that's crazy I can't believe he doesn't believe me so I like had to like chill out and actually explain it to him for a little little while um because apparently there had been a call about my van being parked at the the lighthouse loop for a full week or something and that was definitely not the case i had only been there for two days i was there last week and then i was there again yesterday but i did park in the exact same spot like in the exact same position of my van uh, so it might have definitely looked like if somebody came at that first time and then this time that I could have been there the entire time, but that was not the case. I guess that kind of teaches me a lesson to switch up my parking spot. That's pretty much why he didn't believe me and I had to explain that to him. And then he uh, goes on to being like, you can't live in your vehicle. And I'm like, I didn't think the law was you can't live in your vehicle I thought it was that I can't sleep in it in Euclid and then that like kind of made him mad and like he started aggressively asking me more questions like what I'm doing today and like what I've been doing am I homeless like and getting like all my information I explained to him like about what I've been doing for the past year with my job in Vancouver and how I've never been here before and I just wanted to see the town and uh and he yeah he wasn't he wasn't taking it i think he thought i was like a really good liar or something because i definitely couldn't have uh created what i was telling him at a certain point i was definitely getting nervous and because it was much more aggressive than i've ever been used to being questioned until the point that i actually talked a lot and i feel like maybe he eventually started to believe my story a little bit more um i told him that i was going to the library today and he was like, and I was like, it doesn't even open until 1, and I move, make my moves at 6 a.m. For some reason, he couldn't believe that I was going to the library. <laughs> um, I told him I was going to be going to the library from like 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, and he didn't believe that for some reason. He was like, you're going to be there for three hours? I was like, in my head, I was like, you don't believe three hours? I spend like eight hours at the library sometimes. And so I was just like, uh, yeah, I'm going to be there like for that long. And then I do have plans after the library to meet up with a friend, a local of Euclid, uh, that I'm meeting for the first time. So that should be tonight if the rain doesn't keep up. Uh, hopefully I'll be having, having a campfire and... Anyways, that's a side note. Once I see him, I can definitely ask him about these really strict bylaws, which I kind of knew about, but I think I've been doing it like, okay. I don't think it's actually a law that you can't live in your vehicle. I think it's just you can't sleep. Um, he didn't really confirm or deny or anything about that, but, but yeah, he just stayed on the question train and so yeah he did end up like leaving and i was like okay good he didn't ask me to even move and he didn't give me a ticket so like these are two good things but i think he just was really suspicious that i had been sleeping like in these parking lots that say no camping on all the signs and i think once i convinced him of that like he kind of like cooled down and then he actually came back to my van like two seconds later and decided to tell me about RV parking lots that are specified for RVs during the day 
in in town so actual locations of it and i wrote those down in my notes and i'll be looking those up on the map so that's actually really helpful advice like i didn't see any signs about that or see those on the map so i'm excited to check those out and actually have an, a location closer to downtown um but yeah anyways it was just a lot of explaining myself just he wouldn't believe so many facts that it was just like oh boy oh boy let's just let's just have a chit chat mr nelson <sighs> so yeah i also brought up to him that it was kind of like difficult to find specific laws and like clear language about bylaws and stuff because that's true um, I do like to do a little bit of research so hopefully that barrier breaks down a little bit and then van life and society can coexist happily and more seamlessly. I feel a little bit better about my skills to explain myself and not like trip up over my story or something because even when I'm telling the truth like with someone aggressively questioning you I feel like there's easily um a way to just mix up the story and sound like you're not telling the truth so but he did warn me that yeah as the season becomes more summery <laughs> as the warm warmer weather comes it's gonna be a lot more strict and that they're gonna be handing out tickets pretty easily wide open area with no one around and that raging sand river that's amazing and that mist on those waves looks purple and glowing this is a lot to take in wow Shit, sand is just falling intensely. Oh. Okay, I guess I'll keep my distance. <laughs>
is that cute little thing. Lucky enough to stumble upon a little bit of shelter on this rainy day. <laughs> These are intense metal and concrete floors. I wonder what kind of like factory or business this used to be. I'm about to reach a wreckage of a plane. <laughs> Spoiler alert. To the plane. from the rain inside this plane. Are these cup holders? For big cups? I know a lot of people must hate the graffiti, but at least it's colorful. But also this natural green, kind of like a really soft army green of this plane is really nice. I like that color a lot. <laughs> this is awesome. It was definitely worth the bloody hike to get here. I have a couple other beaches that I wanted to check out today while I'm under this specific parking permit for the national park here. Um, so that's the plan after this, but this was quite the adventure too. I'm definitely gonna linger for a little while. I kind of rushed out a family that was here, but maybe I'll just relax and 
until another one shows up. <laughs> this is a lot larger than I thought it would be. Zigging kitten. By the way, this is the damage so far. But we're on our way back, so I don't think that's too bad. <laughs> Rest in peace, sea lion.